What are black Seminoles, bro? Where did they come from? Well, let's start with who the Seminoles were. Okay. The Seminoles were not a single tribe. The Seminoles were a combination of several of the southeastern tribes. Okay. Most of them were Creek, mm -hmm. uh, but others were Cherokees and Chippewas. So these okay. were the southern tribes that the U.S. government under uh, Andrew Jackson wanted to remove mm -hmm. them from the southeastern states so that those states could be settled by white people. The Indians were in the way. So in 1835, the Indian Removal Act with Jackson's uh, leadership uh, was passed, and these people had, had to be removed forcibly from land in Georgia, Tennessee, Alabama, Florida, oh, not Florida, but um, that act was intended to clear the land. And some of the Native Americans, now most of, most of them agreed, or at least they complied and, and, and left. Some of them said, no, we're not going to be removed to, to the West, we're going to escape into Florida, and they became known as Seminoles. As I said, most of them were Creek, but they were also other tribes as well. And, and when, the when they said no, correct me if I'm wrong. Now, when they said no, then they were considered renegades. That's right. I think I heard you say that, right? Right. The word Seminole, in a sense, means wild. It exactly. won't be contained or won't go along with the program. That's what I wanted you to say. Yeah, you throw some beans out the door and they followed, just come up. Those Seminole beans, just throw them out there and they just come up. With okay. So it would not comply. Would not, and, they, and so these people started moving into Florida and um, some of them owned slaves. The, slave, the Seminoles moved into Florida, many of them owned slaves who had been given to them by the British. Sometimes the British would give a, a, a couple of slaves to, a, to, a, to, a, to a, a chief, a Creek chief or Cherokee chief who would help them. So the Seminoles had their own black slaves. They treated them differently than American uh, white people treated slaves. But as the Seminoles moved into Florida with their slaves, here comes the U.S. government trying to round the blacks and take them back to Georgia. Okay. So the Seminoles are saying, wait a minute, wait a minute. These are our people. Uh, there, there, there were black people living among the Seminoles who had never been enslaved. Okay, now may I stop you there? Okay, so we're talking about black people in Florida. Seminoles are the Indians being pushed down to Florida. Right. Is this Spanish Florida that they're coming Yes, in? I mean, in, yes. Oh, okay, so we're talking Spanish Florida. All right. Uh, 1835, Florida really was a territory. Okay. In the state in 1845. But okay. So it was a territory, the Florida mm -hmm. territory. So therefore, there was sort of loose control down here. So mm -hmm. coming into Florida was a good way to escape the federal government. So, okay. But what, what would entice blacks to come into Florida? It, it was close to Georgia. Okay. And South Carolina. And if you wanted to be free, there was, a, there was a, the, the railroad, the underground railroad going all the way to Ohio and, and Canada. But if you were a slave in Savannah, uh, in, in South Carolina, you come south into Florida. Uh, so as these black people came into Florida, and now I'm talking about black people who were former slaves who escaped, mm -hmm. you also had black people who lived with the Seminoles. Some of them were married to Seminoles mm -hmm. and never been enslaved and were part of the Seminole tribe for two or three generations. So when the U.S. government comes in to try to take the blacks back to Georgia, they started taking black Seminoles that were, that were owned by the Seminole Indians. And that led to three wars, known as, known as the Seminole three Wars. Seminole Wars. Right. Because, so black Seminoles basically, Ray, uh, were uh, black people who were not necessarily mixed blood with the Seminoles. Most of them were just black people, but they allied themselves uh, as they came into Florida with the Seminoles. And of course, as I said, the Seminoles had some black people who had, been, who had been living with them for generations. So these folks were basically the black Seminoles, and they lived close to the Seminoles. They, they, the Seminoles copied them, they copied the Seminoles, and they managed to survive in wilderness Florida. And I'm going to assume that one of the reasons that blacks who crossed into Florida, former slaves, lived close to the Seminoles for some kind of protection because there were always slave hunters uh, well, coming no, back no, in no, to no, try no, to They protected them, right? each other. No, when, when, no, okay. there, was, when there was a threat, the U.S. Mm -hmm. government troops were getting too close, the blacks had their chief, the Indians had their chief, they would okay. join together and fight to resist the, 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 uh, the, the military taking them out of Florida. Okay. So there were, in, in some ways, we need to recognize that the blacks exchanged cultures with the Indians. They helped each other. Mm -hmm. So it was not just a matter of the Indians taking care of the blacks and, and, and teaching them how to survive in Florida. Some of these blacks had been there, had been in Florida for quite some time. They could help the Seminoles. Uh, give, give, give us some examples of how some of these uh, blacks helped the Seminoles, like uh, like Abraham, for example. Who was Abraham? Negro Abraham. Negro, was named, okay, the Negro Abraham. Abraham. Who, who was Negro, Negro he, Abraham? He survives in the history book as a black Seminole who was very instrumental in uh, acting as an interpreter mm -hmm. for the Indians in their dealing with the U.S. Army. 
Um, uh, he was uh, he was a very he was a character. Uh, wore turbans, mm-hmm. and he was extremely cross-eyed. Mm-hmm. There was, a, there was a, a, a photograph of him with these with these Indians, and he was so cross-eyed that the Indians thought he was divine, had some some special mm-hmm. gift from God. But he was a very effective uh, interpreter for the Seminoles. Uh, uh, they depended upon him. Um, as it turned out, Micanope, the last one, of the last of, of the Seminole chiefs, wouldn't take a move, would make a move without checking with Abraham. Mm-hmm. In fact, he would stay in, in the Negro camp about as often as he stayed in the Seminole camp. So he was a very instrumental person in terms of uh, helping the, the Seminoles deal with the military. Now, now he, was, he was very instrumental and very highly respected uh, by the Seminoles, I know. Uh, but it, it's this story that I've heard uh, true, the other um, guy whose name keeps popping up when you read about black Seminoles, uh, it, it's alleged that he would sell gophers to the Seminoles. Oh, oh, you're talking about John Horse. Uh, he kept selling the same gopher for a quarter or something. Yeah, that was John Horse. Oh, okay, so, so John Horse is, is, is a real character? John Horse, it, he, oh, absolutely. Uh, he was born in uh, near Thedona, Sassa, mm-hmm. Florida. Um, mixed race. Mm-hmm. Uh, very smart as a boy, he would go out into you know gophers. People don't know that in Florida, yeah, the, gophers are like a turtle. Uh, yeah, we call them highland turtles, right. and very very edible. A lot of mm-hmm. gopher meat is you know I don't yeah. really like it. A lot, a lot of folks like well, that. Well, but the gopher legs specifically, yeah, people yeah. would eat. So okay. This boy in his teens would go out and, and and collect gophers and bring them in and then sell them to the army to the army and camp there in, in, mm-hmm. in Tampa. Uh, but what he would do is he would sell the same gopher. To four or five different people, they didn't really know, and ended up making a lot of money just <laughs> falsely. Uh, but it, it gave him close contact with the soldiers, and he, he knew the military culture, and he knew Indian culture, mm-hmm. and he knew white cultures. He was a very, very well placed person. Plus, he was physically overpowering—a very large man. They okay. say he was so handsome that men commented about about his appearance. Wow! And uh, and just very smart. He John Horse's main role was in getting a lot of the Seminoles to come in, okay. to be removed. He recognized that th- this was a losing proposition. It's the, it's, it's the United States Army. Mm-hmm. They're going to kill you, if you don't, and, then, and they killed many of them. So he tried to get the chiefs and did successfully get a lot of them to come in and agree to be removed to the West. And, uh, and so doing, saved a lot, of, a lot of lives, I think. The, but do, do you know this story about uh, why... There was a split, or why the, the the relationship between the Black Seminoles and the Seminoles changed? Is it because some of them went west to help uh, uh, the white uh, army scout or something? Uh, I've read that someplace. Well, some of the Black Seminoles in Florida who who were removed to the west mm-hmm. uh, became Buffalo soldiers, well, and these are men who they turned Buffalo soldier. Okay, yeah. we all know that. Term. Yeah. The, yeah. They were, they were, these were mainly black Seminoles out of Florida who uh, who went out west, and then they acted as scouts for the, for the for the army, and even in some cases they actually fought with the army in suppressing the tribes of the Great Plains, mm-hmm. of the, of the talking about western the, tribes, the Apache and all those guys. Yeah, the see, black the, yeah, see, the Apache were not Cherokee. Mm-hmm. So you went out, you can mess around with Cherokees in Tennessee and North Carolina. Mm-hmm. Well, they went out to out west to try to deal with the Cheyenne and the Sioux. Oh. Now you're talking. <laughs> now you're talking sitting bull. It, it, was, <laughs> it was a different Red style. Yeah. But but isn't it interesting that black men who themselves had been pursued by the by the army when they were in Florida get moved, removed to the west, Oklahoma. Most of them were replaced, mm-hmm. uh, displaced to Oklahoma. They now become an instrument of the U.S. Army in pursuing another minority, the Native Americans. But they did. Some of them did. Oh. In, in fact, there's a photograph of John Horse's son in, uh, in the West in, oh, his, yeah? in his Buffalo uh, soldier uniform. Oh, have, have we ever had a face-to-face chat with, uh, uh, with uh, Chief Osceola uh, here in South Florida to talk about... Uh, the history between blacks and the Seminoles and and how the Seminoles feel about blacks today? Well, I'm disappointed in the Seminoles because, you know, the Seminoles started these casinos and they started making a lot of money on their their sovereign territory. Mm -hmm. So Seminoles who who can prove themselves to be Seminoles get part of that money. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot of money. Of course. 
uh, when the black Seminoles applied to be a part of getting the money from the casinos, the Seminoles said no. They refused to allow them to be equal participants in collecting money from the casinos. So there's a rift between black Seminoles today and yeah. the Seminole tribe over that. Now, I, I, I understand that in terms of the money, the Seminoles are actually making a lot of money, and you know they have the casinos and all. They have a lot of properties, but uh, the actual Seminole people themselves are not getting that money. You know, they're, they're not all millionaire billionaires now. And the story that I've always gotten was that uh, that the the chiefs always wanted to make sure that they maintain their culture. That, you, know, you don't just give a whole bunch of people millions of dollars. Everybody will leave. Well, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't have been millions, but it's a very, very substantial yeah, sum that would go to each, each, each man, woman, and child. And I don't know how the, how the tribe is, is dispersing that money. I assume that the folks who can prove that they're Seminoles do get that money. So, but I don't know. I, I, I'm dipping in something I don't know. That much yeah, about. Well, I only right. know that they won't allow black Seminoles to be a part of of, of the legitimate uh, collectors of, of this largest. Okay, now I understand that, that is there an annual uh, celebration or, or, or something of the black Seminole? They're, they're mostly in Oklahoma now, right? Oklahoma and Mexico. And uh, Mexico. Yeah, it's now, not don't annu- they get together once in a while? Yeah, about, about every two years. They, okay. uh, they meet near Jupiter. Mm-hmm. And they meet there because that's the point in Florida where many of them were shipped west from, uh, from, from Jupiter. There's a lake, there's a lake. There's a river that empties in, 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 the in, 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 into, the, into the ocean at, at, at Jupiter so they could get ships in there. To why why the isn't that more widely uh, advertised so that people could actually come and see, meet, talk with, and learn the history of black Seminoles? That's, that's almost hidden. Well, uh, it is. It is. You know, they were the, they were, the black Seminoles were involved in the Dade battle. Mm-hmm. In 1835, uh, Colonel, major, Colonel Dade. Well, he was a major. Oh, Major Dade. Major Francis uh, L. Dade. Well, let, let's let's make sure that our audience know that Major Dade is the same gentleman that Dade County, that Miami Dade County is named after. So that's who you're talking about, Francis L. Lacon Dade. Yes, mm-hmm. white military officer, a major. He was stationed. We're talking 1835 uh, in Fort Brooke, which is now Tampa, mm-hmm. military camp there. And Ray, there had been an agreement with the Seminoles. It was called the Moultrie, Moultrie Creek Treaty. Moultrie Creek Treaty. Uh, and in that treaty, the, the, the white, the gov- American government agreed that Indians were, had the interior of, uh, interior of Florida. White people had the land 12 miles up on, along the coast. All that was white mm-hmm. people's land. But once you go 12 miles inland, that's Seminole t- c- country. And by that treaty, white people could not go into Seminole country without permission. Mm-hmm. Anyway, there was a fort near Ocala. Mm-hmm. The army decides to send a cannon up to that fort. And that fort is in, in the interior of Florida, in right. Seminole. Ocala. They didn't ask the Seminoles if they could do that. They just had Dade leave at December um, and, and start marching towards Fort uh, uh, Ocala uh, with 107 men and this cannon. And there was a black man in front leading them through the, through, uh, along what's called the Fort King Road. Um, his name was Louis Pacheco. Mm-hmm. So as they were going through along this trail, it was cold, it was raining. The men had their weapons underneath their raincoats. And Pacheco is in front, and right behind him, him is Dade on a horse. Dade was the only person on a horse. All the other men are walking, walking behind him, and Pacheco's up front. So all of a sudden... Uh, the Seminoles rise up out of the wet, dripping sawgrass, and they fired the first volley, and a third of Dade's men fell, including Dade. They, they got Dade first. He was dead before he hit the ground. When this happened, uh, instead of running and spreading out in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the sawgrass, Dade's men cut down little trees and stacked them into a triangular fort, and all of them, the survivors got into that little fort. It's still, it's, it's replicated it, that on the Dade battlefield today. You can see mm-hmm. it. Uh, so here you have these white men, the ones that survived, in this little enclosure, and the, the Seminoles were getting ready to leave. They, they were done. They knocked out a third of Dave's men, killed a, major, uh, a military officer, but they looked back and they couldn't resist. All these men in that little fort, they went, little, they went back and they shot and killed whoever was still apparently alive. And then the Seminoles left. They took that three dead warriors with them and they left. 
Mm. In comes 50 black Seminoles on saddleless horses. They ride up. And they get down, dismount, and they go into this pit with their knives. And they cut the throat of everybody who was still alive. Mm. Some of them, some of the days men were still alive. And then they ride off. The Indians would not let the blacks participate in the actual attack on day. Mm-hmm. But, but when, after, the, after attack. The, they were able to come in and wipe out the rest of those who, who survived. And that was known, known as the Dade Battle, 1835. Um, now, mind you, this was uh, uh, decades before Custer bought it. That's a little big, big horn in, in, in Montana mm-hmm. where 288 men were lost. So when Dade got slaughtered with his men in Florida, it made news all over the country because it had never happened before when Native Americans dis- uh, 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 were able to destroy standing troops in the field. It had not, ha- had not happened before. Uh, but the result of the Dade battle was that the Army then sent a whole lot of soldiers into Florida. A whole lot of uh, uh, men came into Florida to get the Indians out, get the blacks out, and, and make it safer. But what, what I don't understand, I've never understood about the Dade story, is he led those men and his, his soldiers into battle. He was the first to fall, so he really didn't do any fighting. No. He was dead almost upon arrival. Yeah. How did he get Day, Miami-Dade County named after him? Well, a lot of places were named after Dade when this happened. As I said, this is not, uh, th- this was a, a first time thing. So, but he lost the battle. W- well, no, that didn't count. Uh, didn't he, count. He was a fallen hero. <laughs> there's a there's a statue of Dade in the quadrangle at West Point. All kinds of places get na- start start being named after the Dade City. There's Dade. Ca- he was a, he was a hero at that at that moment. But in fact, uh, Dade got himself and almost all of his men. Three men survived. Or killed that day in those in, the, in those woods. Now, Luis Pacheco, the the guy, the slave mm-hmm. who's in front, when this when 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 the Seminoles opened fire, he dropped to the ground and played dead. And when the the shooting was over, and the Seminoles were getting ready to leave, he jumped up and said, "I'm a slave that made me come." So Jumper, the chief who led that raid, mm-hmm. took him took Luis Pacheco as his slave. Now, I, I've I've heard a stories about Jumper. Okay, yeah. so when Jumper got removed to the west, he took Luis Pacheco with him. That's how Pacheco got out of Florida. But, um, you know, the Black Seminoles. Huh? Black Seminoles. Black Seminoles, indeed. And they're oh, they're, give, they're give, still with us. Give me an estimate, if you know, of how many Black Seminoles are there, counting the Mexicans, the Oklahomans, Oklahomans. Well, how many? I have no idea, but probably a few thousand. Comfort. A few thousand, and, and, and they they still maintain the Seminole uh, oh, yeah. culture with yeah. the dress and yeah. Yeah. John Griffin, a good friend of mine in, in, in Groveland, Florida, mm-hmm. was a black Seminole. I visited him several times. What were you doing in Groveland? Uh, uh, looking into the Groveland Five, yeah, the Gro- the Groveland Four, the Groveland Four. Yeah, yeah. Well, another, well let, let's story. let's let's save that for another day. Uh, another story, by all means, bro. Like I said. Every time we do one of these uh, podcasts, I learn something new. I thank you very much. And You're welcome. Uh, e- even after we close this this show, I know I'm going to have some more questions because I, I, I feel the time running out on us. But hey, we got to talk a little bit more about the Black Seminoles because one of the things that I want to know is why can we not advertise that uh, there are black seminaries, and that they do come to Florida, Jupiter, Florida, every couple of years or so to celebrate their culture. I, anyway, I, I could really get up on the story on that. We'll talk more privately about that. All right. Okay, bro, that's a wrap.